Well, hello, hello, how's it going? Today, I'm going to spend my whole day here on the green roof. There's a lot of weeding to be done, but more importantly, I need to propagate an awful lot of them. So why do I want to propagate? So even though we have this green roof, we actually are building our hen coop and over the run part of the coop, a complex thing. Um, I'm also going to make a, a new green roof. We have had this green roof now for a few years and it has brought us a lot of joy. Um, now it does come with its own little uh, bit of work as well but it's only periodically it's not uh, consistent maintenance um, as, as such you might have with borders. And you might consider it uh, quite a, a large size for a domestic DIY green roof uh, because the, the size is 5 metres by 3 metres, so it's 15 square metres in overall size. And we have um, obviously the mixes of alpines and sedums on it. And it's um, about mid-June now, but because the spring has been quite cool. We've only had few spells of warm weather. Um, and even today, it's only about 13, 14 degrees. Um, then it's it's about time that we I would take uh, cuttings or uh, we, I'll try to propagate the plants because I have plenty of material, but also it needs a lot of weeding because some of the uh, annual weeds and some of the grass that has crept up here as well. Um, I can see seed, uh, flower heads and seed heads on them and that's what you don't want because you just will have so much extra work then um, if they do uh, spread themselves amongst them, especially as I have a few bare batches, uh, patches of um, ground as well. I had a terrible year this year with vine weevil. Um, if you're not familiar with it, it is a little brown a crawling insect that can actually crawl walls as well and it's not really the insect that does the damage it is the grubs or the little maggots that um, hatch out of the eggs that basically eat the, eat the roots of the plants and um, I had a lot of saxifrage on this roof and whatever remnants I have now, I'm probably going to take them out. If, if there's some healthier plants left, I leave them. But otherwise, it seems like the, the wine weevil in this especially um, fond of saxifrage. So I, I'll uh, take that away just to hopefully reduce the attractiveness of this roof because there's other plants that it doesn't seem to bother and those are the ones that I do want to propagate. Now I do have a few different um, sedum varieties here and um, the, the difference between these sedums and some of the other sedums that you've come across I've heard of like the Autumn Joy uh, which now has been renamed to a name that I can't even uh, pronounce is that they are ground covering, they're creeping varieties and then I do also have um, alpine plants likes of uh, phlox and then uh, dianthus and um, I'll be taking yeah so I'll be taking cuttings of the ones that are my favorite which the ones that have actually survived and lasted and that are driving in uh, this environment that we have here and the very first one the main one that I definitely want to um, spread more around here and then for the new roof is this which is a sedum album and it has such a beautiful carpet like texture so this is the most sort of typical type of a look of a plant that you uh, might see on green roofs it uh, changes color it changes color in the season during the winter it's this kind of a quite reddish but it also goes red when it's under a bit of um, stress and pressure so um, but yeah th then it puts out these lovely uh, white uh, sea, uh, flower heads which haven't opened yet so you don't quite see them yet so it's definitely time to um, get the cuttings um, done and I also want to take a cutting of that uh, sort of quite a, a bright yellow looking um, more of a 
a bit like a horsetail um, weed looking a sedum which is gold mound now it has much um, more of a acidic yellow uh, colors also it has a different texture than um, than uh, the sedum album and it changes uh, color to these pink tones as well so two of them work really well together and um, its uh, flower heads are, are different looking and as you see here the two of them are really nicely binding into each other another two that are real champions are this one here dragon blood sedum which is actually herbaceous so it dies back for the winter you think the plant has died but um, it all comes up again and then there's this evergreen one um, a variegated variety even though usually variegated ones are a bit weaker and again it's not it's not thriving as much as the others but it still gives a nice um, it gives a nice variety for the planting scheme and in this particular corner which is the most exposed it still has survived so um, that's the sedum album here and then we have the um, uh, dragon blood which once these flowers open you can sort of see it a little bit here already it has the most amazing deep dark red flowers so they're all about to come out I have sexy fresh here and the creeping phlox so that is definitely another variety i am going to take cuttings off because um first of all it's very easy uh, even for other areas rather than just even the green roof i do have it in my planters um, in front of the house as well but it's just such a resistant plant it covers areas really really well and obviously the flowers are beautiful and then i would have taken cuttings of this stone crop as well but i'm a little bit unsure about it because this was the second plant once the saxifrage was demolished um the white weevil did a lot of damage to um, an area here uh, where I had a lot of, of that stone crop. Now it is all um, coming back again because I did um, do a big nemat uh, nematode treatment for the whole roof. But um, I, I'm thinking at the moment I might uh, leave it out. And then a newcomer for this year for me was this um, Semper Revive. I'm going to just divide a couple of the smaller ones and um, spread them out a bit because um, they look really pretty good color different texture again and um, yeah should be very hardy as well for this uh, area before taking any propagation materials you do want to have your um, uh, growing medium or potting compost or something like that ready and um, what it needs to be it needs to be something that's really free draining and for this i'm actually using some of the leftover gravel that we got um because we needed to build a concrete base for the hen coop and run and all i'm doing is just sieving out the bigger stones now it happened to be a really nice sandy gravel that we got and for this sieved um, gravel, sandy gravel mix, I'm actually mixing in peat-free uh, container uh, potting mix. And um, it, it's actually really nice fibrous. And why peat-free is really important is because if peat dries out, it dries out rock hard. And I'm mixing it in about uh, one third of the potting mix compost mix with that gravel mix and it the texture would want to be sort of like if you're making a crumble top for a um, apple pie or something so it's um, sort of nice and loose and, and crumbly sedum album i have a clump here that's hanging sort of over the edge already now once it's not getting any kind of because uh, it's because the roots are so far away from the soil um, it's not getting any um, moisture from there um, and the roots are drying up 
but even all these little pieces are viable so all of them could actually potentially put down roots so I'm going to take a clump of that now so this is the bunch of that I took off the edge but you I don't believe it and what a good example to show you a wine weevil likes to operate during the darkness and during the daylight uh, for the day they just go into hiding there was two wine weevils adult wine weevils just hiding under the foliage so this is what a wine weevil adult wine weevil looks like they go around and cut holes or eat the, the leaves the plants they can eat some of the obviously roots of the sedums easily as well but it is the grubs that do so much damage and you can get an infest infestation very fast because they can survive for a couple of years if you have hard winters some of the adults that are hibernating yes they might be killed off but unfortunately they can be quite prolific and the only organic way of dealing with to deal with them is with nematodes now I have to find the second one as well so they are very hard to um, spot because they camouflage so well amongst the planting But there you go. They don't hurt. They're so light. You could hardly feel that they're walking. They don't bite me or anything. But they are little devils in my eyes. So once the weevils are taken care of, I have these um, reused mushroom uh, trays um, I have no drainage in them so they're just solid plastic tray and I haven't even half filled it because um, sedums are so shallow rooted they don't need uh, an awful lot of compost anyway and then these are the, the pieces of um, sedum that I pulled off the edge of the roof there and as you see um, there are young little roots here underneath already and all I have to do is just pull them into pieces like that and I'm going to just lay them on the surface of the compost push it in a little bit and I'm going to just spread them out on the surface like that And there's potential that they're going to grow more new roots. And all I have to do is just make, sh make sure it stays um, damp and humid in there. But even though the roots are here at the moment, it can easily shoot out from any of the little junction where the leaf nodes are so and I'm going to do very similar with the gold mound um, I actually pulled up a bit of a, a plant so um, obviously it has its own roots on it already I'll just take up co out a couple of the tips I'm going to lay it into the gravel so I'll just take out the growing tips because I just wanted to sort of push its growing hormones outwards rather than just to um, to the side no.
Now for the dragon's blood, I've actually taken a whole long stem, but very similar to the last gold mondo. And you could layer them easily as well. There's um, the same thing if we just root from any of the leaf cuttings. But what I'm going to do is just take down some of the leaves, just pinch out the very, very tip of it. And this then is going to go to the side of the pot. And I'll probably put about two per pot, but I've done the same thing. Those are only little pots and they're, they're about half filled because they don't need um, deep, deep pots at all. And then obviously these need to be watered now. They're standard pots, so they have holes in the bottom that I can water straight through them. For the Semper Vivum, could not be easier again. Same thing, just pull off those little, little babies from the side. I like the hen and chicks, so pull off the chicks. And they just go onto the surface, a little bit into them. couple together and I'll just pull off some of the bottom leaves as well it just will trigger shooting of the new roots or you can or you can scrape the stem with a fingernail just do a little bit of a like damage to the surface. And last, the the, um, the flux, the creeping flux. Um, I find them even easiest uh, to propagate through layering, um, but because they have a creeping. Um, habit anyway, so they will send down little suckers, or not suckers, but uh, roots from its own stem. So layering it like that, uh, flatten down to the ground, heap a bit of soil on top of it, and that's it. But what I'll just do in here, the same thing, I'll take the tip out and I'll clear the bottom half of the leaves. and into the grit it goes. And I'll just put it slightly angled into the soil. So it's just from any part where the leaf junction, the leaf nodes were, you can send out shoots or roots. And always pick the non-flowering st um, stems. And that is it. So all I need to do now is water them. And that's the Flux, the Semper Vivum, and this is the Dragon Blood. And in here I have the other sedums, the Album and Gold Mound. So I'm going to place all these trays now into the greenhouse after I water them under the potting table away from the direct sunshine but they'll be nice and warm and cozy there. So that's the cuttings taken for the new greenhouse. Um, I have all the weeding to do now here and then I'm also going to just take cuttings and set them on situ here between the plants and hopefully they'll sort of naturalize themselves then in those gaps and the bare, um, the bare patches themselves. So I hope this little video gave you um, a quick idea and just to show you how easy it is to propagate your um, sedums and alpines and maybe just to take out the fear of doing your own propagation because what have you got to lose if you have the plants just 
give it a go and and see um, how you could just save yourself a bunch of money, especially if you're dealing with something like that. So thanks a million for watching and we'll see you next time.